Hello friends, this video on Forest Sour Lifeline Part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have discussed about the process of decomposition, we saw that different types of organisms live in a forest. So let us talk about the overall relationship between different organisms. Now in a forest, the first thing that we have to talk about are the plants because plants are the autotrophs. That is, they prepare their own food. So if plants stop preparing their food, obviously all other organisms will also starve because other organisms are also directly or indirectly dependent on plants. So plants, firstly, so now these plants are eaten up by a set of animals which directly eat plants. For example, this goat or a cow or a buffalo or a, a deer. So these are all herbivores. So these animals, they directly depend on plants for their food. These animals in turn are eaten up by animals like carnivores, lions, tigers. So these are the carnivores. These are the herbivores. Now this is just one example. It is not that tiger is the only carnivore. A lot of other carnivores are also present. Similarly, a lot of other herbivores are also present. So you see, these animals are like how they are depending on each other inside the forest. Now what happens when all these die? When the plants die, when the uh, herbivores die, when the carnivores die, when all of these die, they are decomposed by the decomposers. So here you have the decomposers which are mostly the bacteria and the fungi and they are present, the bacteria are mostly present in the soil. So this entire process of decomposition takes place in the soil. Now as a result of decomposition what happens? These decomposers they convert the dead remains of plants and animals into something called humus. And humus is something which improves the quality of the soil. It improves the fertility of the soil. Now when the fertility of the soil is improved, this soil again helps in further growth of plant. So the soil again helps in plant growth. So you see, it's like a cycle. Like everybody is interdependent on one another. So don't you think that the tiger is also dependent on the plant? Yes, because tiger is dependent on the goat. The goat is dependent on plant. So don't you think that the plant is dependent on the tiger? Yes, to some extent, because with the tiger remains also humus is being formed and that humus is utilized for growth of plants. So all of them are in a way dependent on each other for obtaining their food, for their survival. So this is how different organisms are related to each other inside a forest. Now, a very important thing that we will discuss is how forests act as natural absorber of rainwater. Now, forests also help us to, uh, to increase the supply of groundwater. It helps to recharge, it helps to refill the groundwater and we will see how. Now normally what happens when it rains very heavily in a city, what happens? The roads get flooded so many times, a lot of, in case, in, during heavy rainfall which continues for a couple of days, sometimes small towns and small areas get completely flooded. So that, that's how it happens in cities or towns. Why? And why does that happen? That's because there are not much trees in those areas. But in forests, these kind of scenarios do not come up. Here what happens is, since you have a lot of trees, so due to the presence of the trees, now when you have trees, you have huge trees, you have the canopy. Due to the presence of the forest canopy or the forest roof, the rainfall or the rainwater is not able to fall directly on the ground. So the rain actually falls on the roof of the forest and the roof of the forest is nothing but the canopy. And then from the canopy, it reaches the other parts of the forest. So that's why it doesn't reach the uh, ground directly. So however, this rainwater, it passes through the soil and then it recharges the groundwater. It increases the amount of groundwater. It helps to control floods because the plants, plant roots, they are like firmly, you know, uh, fixed to the soil and since the water doesn't directly strike the ground so therefore there is no water logging on the ground and that helps to control floods. It prevents water logging in the soil during heavy rainfall as I said just now. Prevent soil erosion because the roots of the plants they hold the soil so tightly that soil cannot get carried away by water. Now what is soil erosion before that? It is nothing but carrying away of the top layer of soil carrying away 
of top layer of soil by wind or water so during heavy rainfall it gets carried away by water now if you are losing the topmost layer of the soil so you are actually losing that layer which is most fertile so in that case if you lose that layer obviously your crop productivity will get hampered so forests also prevent soil erosion from taking place because it is tightly holding the soil and it it, it is not very easy to carry it away with the water so let us try to understand how forests help to recharge groundwater and maintain the water table. I am sure all of you remember what is water table. We have discussed about it in the lesson on water. So uh, water table is that level below the ground from where abundant amount of water is present in between the spaces, in between the rock spaces. So you see this is the soil and below the soil as you go deep you reach a level beyond which you have sufficient amount of water present and this water which this is this water is called ground water and this water is fetched using bore wells, tube wells, hand pumps so they fetch water from under the ground so this is where from which they fetch the water now the question is how forests help to add more water to this or how it helps to maintain the water table so that the water table should not vanish now what happens is whenever it rains the rain falls on the forest canopy now due to the presence of the canopy the rain water doesn't directly strike the soil now, if it directly strikes the soil, what will happen? Water logging will take place on the soil. Too much of water will come to the soil. So, instead of that, it comes to the canopy and through the canopy, it drips slowly through the leaves, over the branches. So, drop-wise, it falls. So, that's why it happens that when it starts raining, if you are present inside the forest, you do not get wet because initially the water is all falling on the leaves or it is all falling on the forest canopy, the roof of the forest. And then, gradually the droplets of water come from the leaves to the lower leaves and then to the branches and that's how drip wise it falls to the ground so all these water reaches the soil of course but they do not reach at once but they reach gradually they reach the soil and once they reach the soil then obviously through the spaces between the soil particles they start percolating inside and that's how they enter inside and finally they um, become a part of the groundwater so that's how you know, whenever it rains because it becomes very easy for water to seep in through the soil so if you compare the soil with a marble floor water doesn't get inside through a marble floor but water gets inside through the soil so it becomes easier for water to uh, seep or to pass through the soil and that's how uh, forests help to maintain the water table so here the rain water drips slowly over the branches or leaves so slowly slowly gradually some water reaches the soil and when they reach the soil they go deep inside and that's how they make thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again